Hello everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with an exciting dyeing experiment. We are going to break black food coloring from both the McCormick's and Wilton's brands. Um, now I've told you in the past that black food coloring is made up of a combination of blue, red, and yellow food colorings. And the actual um, mixture in these two different brands of black food coloring are actually different. Um, with the major difference being that the McCormick's food coloring contains red dye number 40 and the Wilton's contains red dye number 3. And so I would also expect that the proportions of the different color dyes will be different in these two different food colorings. So when we try to break the food coloring and see all these different colors separate out, we should see somewhat different results between the McCormick's food coloring and the Wilton's food coloring. And this is what we are going to be examining today. Now in these two pots I have 27 grams of wool, um, wool fiber um, for spinning, in six cups of water and three tablespoons of white vinegar. And I have these on a low heat to bring them up to temperature. And so we are going to mix our dyes over here and then add them directly to the pots and watch the colors separate out. All right, let's start mixing the dyes. With the Wilton's, I'm gonna take a good healthy forkful. You can see from when I added it, there actually is a bluish tinge um, to this food coloring. second forkful. We want to get this dissolved and we want this to be nice and dissolved because clumps of color, um, clumps of the gel coloring in this solution could result in just a much more concentrated spot compared to others. Now there isn't a good way for me to compare the actual concentrations of the two dyes. Um, so I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15, that's 16. Okay, approximately 30 drops, more or less. And I want to use a different fork here to stir this up. The best way that I can show the difference between the two different colors right off the bat is by sticking in some paper towel. So you can see these both look really black, but look at the color that's wicking up. We see a lot of blue from the Wiltons and somewhat less blue um, over in the McCormick's. Um, so who knows exactly what we'll see from when we do this, but they could end up looking really similar. But from what I've seen in the past, we should get slightly different portions of the colors that wick out. So now we need to wait um, for our yarns, or yarn. Now we need to wait for our fibers to start to simmer and then we will be ready to add the dye. I now have these two dye baths on the lowest heat possible and I'm going to be adding the McCormick's food coloring to the front and the Wilton's food coloring to the back. So as I said before this is six cups of water with three tablespoons of vinegar and we're going to be adding a quarter cup of our dye solution. And I'm just pouring that directly in and then plotting it down a bit with a slotted spoon. And that looks pretty black right now. You can now do the same thing on the back one. Trying to distribute it and then give it 
a little bit of a poke to spread it out a bit more with my slotted spoon. All right, so what can we see right off the bat? We can see there's a lot more, I see a lot more red coming out in the Wiltons. And the McCormick's looks a little more dilute, but I think that that could be a result of having less, um, less food coloring potentially in the mix. But the colors are much more vibrant on the Wilton side at this point. Um, and so I'm now going to cover these pots and let this sit a bit and we'll be back. We've now been simmering for five minutes and I just wanted to give you a peek into the two pots and show that the colors have really spread out a bit. And we may actually even end up with some black color. But don't forget that, you know, the fiber goes down a fair amount, especially in this McCormick's pot in front. So what we see, there could still be some mottled stuff towards the bottom. And here, we definitely see some more blue around the edges. Um, I guess it's a little hard to see on the camera, but so I'll move you. So this, to my eye, actually looks redder rather than black um, than with blue and even some white around the edges. And here we see a little bit of blue in the center, but this one looks very, very dark. So, you know, it's also possible I added way too much food coloring to really do this justice. Um, and to give a good example of breaking black food coloring. But that's why this is an experiment and we can always try to repeat it and improve upon it later. So it's been 15 minutes since I first put the lids on these pots of simmer and I'm now going to turn off the heat completely. Um, I don't want these to be too hot because I don't want the fiber to felt at all. I want it to still be spinnable. But I don't know if you can really see when I push down with a slotted spoon, but there's still a lot. Let's see if you kind of see back there. The reason why you can't see the slots or what's beneath them, there's still a lot of color um, in each of these dye baths. Um, in both cases, it's sort of a blue. Look how dark this one is. The McCormick's. I can't believe I thought that it was going to like not have a lot of color at the beginning. But now I'm going to sit and let these cool, but I'm going to keep them covered. So I want the heat to stay in with the fiber, um, but I want to give allow more time for as much of the other color to absorb to the fiber as I can. Um, but who knows, I may have added enough dye that the 27 grams of fiber w is unable to accommodate it. So we will find out. A couple hours have elapsed. And while the water in the pots is still a bit warm, I don't know how well you can see, but the color has really started to clear. in both pots. I guess you can't, it's hard for you to tell. Um, but so that means that most of the color has finally absorbed to the fiber. I'm now going to leave these with the lids off and I'm just going to let it cool very slowly um, overnight and then, um, you know, overnight cooling isn't necessary for this technique, but you know, it's late enough that it makes sense for today. Um, and so then Tomorrow, once these have reached room temperature, I will rinse the fiber out and we will see what we've ended up with. We are now ready to start rinsing because the fiber is totally cool. And we're going to start with the McCormick. Let's start by pouring out the excess water. And you can see that it's running clear, so all of the dye has absorbed the fiber. And now we're going to take a look at the underside 
of this fiber. And yeah, it's maybe a little hard to see, but it is a little reddish. And um, we do have a blue section in the middle. Um, but mostly it's a fairly reddish black. Um, we're now going to rinse this carefully with a little agitation and some dish soap until all the water runs clear. I think that if I were to do this again, I would use a little less food coloring so that way we could see more of the modeling from the different colors as they separate. But it does look like that we may have figured out a way to almost get a very nice black. But we'll see what we see when it dries. We might see um, more of the color like breaking once the fiber has dried. Now I'm going to add the Wiltons, which definitely saw some color breaking. Um, we have beautiful teals and reds in here. And it, once again, the water, um, the rinse water is running completely clear. When we look, the underside looks very much like the top side. Um, and then we've got teal around the edges and a beautiful fuchsia center. So again, I'm going to rinse this with some dish soap water and then lay it out to dry. Now that it is dry, the color breaking from the McCormick black food coloring is much more apparent. You see sections of brighter red, sections that almost appear black and brown, and then a few sections of blue here or there. Yeah. Now, whereas if we look at the breaking of the Wilton dye, the Wilton black broke into some very big extremes. We've got these nice teal sections, some that are a bit more green and some that are a bit lighter blue. Some darker sections that um, are a bit blackish, but then a lot of really just distinct teal versus pink. Um, kind of similar to the hues that we got with the Breaking Delphinium Blue. But, you know, while when you might use them in icing, the McCormick's and Wilton's black food colorings may give you similar results, on yarn, you, got, you get very distinct results when you cause them to break. Um, I wonder what would happen when, if you mixed the two of them together and tried breaking it. What kind of colors you would get. I bet it would look fantastic. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz.